Hi, I'm the Reverend Karen Schomburg. I'm vicar at St. Mark's Episcopal Church in Moscow, Idaho. And today I would like to talk to you about community because today is the day of Pentecost, the birth of the first early Christian community. Now, normally we celebrate the birth of the church with great joy and celebration, with red colors, balloons and banners and songs. We have birthday cake for the church even. But this Sunday we're not going to do that, not only because we're still in isolation, but because we are in mourning. In our reading from Acts today, we find the disciples are sitting in a room waiting and praying. They've been told to do that by Jesus prior to his ascension. He said, I want you to wait for the Holy Spirit to come. And the Holy Spirit will instruct you how to go forward and build this new community so that you can be living into the teachings that I gave you when I was with you on earth. And so they do that. They sit and they pray and they wait. And then they describe what happens is a great rush of wind comes into the room and it is extraordinarily loud. And then they experience what feels like fire coming down on them and they begin just to speak loudly and they just make a great joyous noise. There is wind and there is speaking and outside people hear this. They go, what's going on? And they all gather around. Many, many people from all around gather and they listen to this joyful, beautiful noise. And they all understand what's being said. And they're amazed because they come from all parts of the Roman Empire and they all speak different languages, but they all understand. And then Peter comes out and Peter says to them, I'm going to preach to you the good news of Jesus Christ. And he preaches to them, and they all understand, and 3,000 of them that day are baptized. And this is the forming of the new Christian community. And as they decide how they are going to move forward, they base it on that experience of the Holy Spirit, where all had access to that joyful sound, for all had access, no matter where they came from, no matter what language they spoke, to the good news of Jesus Christ. And so they sold everything that they had, and they held it in common, and they shared with one another, and they took care of one another. They formed a diverse community of solidarity, where even those that had been slaves were now part of that community and were held equally. Paul describes it this way. He says, there was no Jew, there was no Greek, there was no slave, there was no free, there was no male, there was no female, for all were one in Christ Jesus. Later on in Acts, I go on to describe how as the community grows and as the apostles and disciples go out to preach this new way of living, that some were complaining that it was turning the world upside down. Well, yes, it was turning the world of privilege and power on its head with this new way of living and being. Scripture tells us that access to breath is access to life and to power. We hear in the creation story that God breathed on the first human being and animated our human life. We hear in John's gospel today that Jesus breathed on the disciples and gave them the power of the Holy Spirit to go and do the things that Jesus did in his life. Breath is life. And this week, we acknowledge that over 100,000 people in our country have lost their life to a disease that attacks our ability to breathe. And this week, we also heard from a man who cried out 
help me. I can't breathe. Before an officer of the law took his life away from him. We are fighting two diseases right now. A disease that attacks our lungs and takes our breath away. And a disease called racism that attacks our hearts and takes our humanity away. We have moved far, far away from that early church and that early vision of how we hold all in common. But yet what COVID-19 has shown us in this global pandemic is that what happens to one of us happens to all of us. What happened to George Floyd happened to our uncles and our brothers and our fathers, our husbands and our sons. What happened to the people who died of COVID, especially those who live in poverty and don't have access to health care and good nutrition and clean water, happens to our family as well. We know that now. Pentecost is a time where we normally celebrate, as I said, but this Pentecost is different than any Pentecost that we have ever experienced in our entire lives. How do we mark this Pentecost and this weekend of mourning going forward? My prayer is, is that we call on the Holy Spirit to come down on us like it did on those early apostles with fire that burns away all these false assumptions that we have about our humanity, all these false assumptions about privilege and power, about access to what we need to be healthy, beloved children of God. It burns away these ideas about the color of our skin. It burns away ideas that we have about our gender and our gender identity. It burns away these ideas about poverty and wealth. My prayer is it will burn into our hearts our identity as a beloved children of God. Not just Christians, by the way, but all humanity are beloved children of God. My prayer for us as we call on the Holy Spirit is that we can form community of solidarity that stands with those amongst us who are oppressed. That the Spirit will give us breath and power to speak on behalf of those who cannot speak for themselves. That the Spirit will inflame us with anger and outrage at what is being done in the name of privilege and in the name of power. And that we will speak on behalf of those who do not have access to that. My prayer as Christians is that we find our birthright. That as we celebrate the birth of our church, that we remember who we are and what we were called to do in those early days and how we lived our lives. My prayer, my friends, is that we can turn the world upside down. Till we meet again, God be with you.